today we'll be discussing about beam column uh, in CE408 so we'll be reviewing uh, beam column and then uh, we'll see the idea of preliminary design now these are the interaction equations that's available to us in the manual now we have four cases of beam columns in our course. The first case is sway frame with bending in X and Y. And we have sway frame with bending only in X. We have sway frame, non-sway frame, bending in X and Y and non-sway frame with bending in X only. Now there is something that we should be careful while dealing with interaction equations because for each of these cases we have uh, certain factors certain uh, way in which these interaction equations have to be uh, used so we'll be discussing that before we go any further so the first case is sway frame with bending in x and y axes now if you look at the interaction equation there are two interaction equations uh, the first interaction equation is when PR over PC is greater than or equal to 0.2 when PR over PC is less than 0.2 we have another equation now uh, we will be dealing with one of the equation just to see how uh, each term because PR is common in both PC is common in both uh, likewise the rest of the, uh, these terms are common in both except that these factors are different so we'll see how these uh, terms have to be found now if you look at PR now the before we analyze each of them we have to understand that the numerators in all of these are capacities for example PC is a cap when we're dealing with a beam column we have a uh, 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 an element, a structural element which is subjective to both compression as well as bending. So PC is the capacity uh, in it is the axial capacity. So this MCX is the uh, capacity, it is a moment capacity uh, about X axis or the strong axis and MCY is the moment capacity about the weak axis uh, the, while all these or while the three uh, terms at the in the in, in the bottom is in the denominator is uh, uh, capacity the top terms in the numerator all uh, are really based on the applied loads that is the ultimate load based on the ultimate loads these terms are calculated while the denominator is the capacity of the member in different uh, uh, in different in strength in point points of view now PR is calculated using the term uh, PR is equal to PNT plus B2 PLT if you notice there is something called B2 and B1 B1 and B2 these are moment magnification factors which will be uh, dealing with uh, after these slides now now there are terms called PNT and PLT and then something like uh, PNT now this PNT and PLT would be important when we're dealing with a sway frame in a sway frame you will be given uh, two analysis results that is sway analysis and non-sway analysis well in the case of a non-sway frame uh, PLT is not required at all okay now in sway frame you will be given before uh, with the problem this is a structural analysis part of it and uh, these are calculated from some computer oriented programs and you will be given PNT, PLT, MNTX, MN, MLTX, MNTY and MLTY you, you won't have to calculate them in a sway frame so you will have to however you will have to calculate B1 and B2 uh, 
using an equation that is available to us in the manual okay so in the case of uh, a sway frame you now since it is a sway frame we have to deal with this nt and lt terms and since there is bending in both x and y we have to uh, calculate mrx mcx mry and mcy now suppose you have a case in which you have a sway frame with bending in x only you don't have bending in y that is you don't have any moments in y in that case this term would disappear mr over uh, mry over mcy would disappear we just have to deal with pr mrx pc and mcy now suppose you have uh, the third case is non sway frame with bending in both x and y now if you take a look at this you'll see that the lt terms have all disappeared you don't have the lt term here you can have the mnt uh, uh, mnt and lt term you don't have the mlt term here and if you have a non sway frame with bending in x only this term disappears while the others uh, are the same b1 is calculated from uh, the equation given in the manual as cm uh, divided by 1 minus pr or pre or pe1 and now cm is a factor to be calculated uh, based on uh, the presence of lateral loads now it's i mean transverse load if you have transverse loads uh, you can give cm as 1 while if you don't have transverse loads you have to calculate cm based on this equation where m1 over m2 uh, m1 is the uh, the smallest moment in that section and m2 is the largest moment in the section and m1 over m2 ratio is positive if the sign of m1 and m2 uh, are opposite the ratio of m1 over m2 is negative if m1 and m2 has the same sign and now b b2 is calculated now b2 is only required if you remember in sway analysis so b2 is calculated based on a similar equation except that cm is taken as one as default now these are the steps of analysis you have to calculate the ultimate loads probably would be given with uh, the um, mm, service load so you'll have to calculate the ultimate loads then you split your problem into two you have the column action as well as the beam action now the column action is used to actually find these terms pr over pc i mean you, you, you'll find pr and pc from there uh, and then uh, using the beam action you find the rest of them mrx we are bending in beam action uh, bending in x to find mrx mcx and bending action in y to find mry and mcy so in, in column action, you have to check the local buckling, overall buckling. And based on that, you find the capacity PPN. So your PPN is basically PC. And your PR can be calculated by PNT plus PLT. Because you have not calculated B2 yet, you can calculate uh, PR as PNT or PLT. Now you can check the ratio because if you remember, you have to check this ratio, PR over PC, to choose the... Uh, interaction equation so so based on this ratio you can decide your interaction equation now the next step is bending and uh, beam action that is bending about x so in bending about x you have to check local buckling as well as lateral torsional buckling and then you have to calculate pm and x based on these because uh, the higher uh, the, le the least of these two will be the capacity and the next and then b1 and b2 cal can be calculated from the equations that we discussed and that are available in the manual b2 is not actually available but it's similar to b1 except that cm is taken as 1 by default and here the value of pr uh, can be taken as uh, pnt plus plt because we are not aware of the value of um, uh, b1 yet now to calculate now based on this you can calculate the value of mrx because mrx is mnt 
b1 mnt plus b2 mnt now mrx can be calculated mrx over mcx which is the p mnx so you get this ratio if you have bending in y you have to check the local buckling for the flange only you don't have to check for lateral torsion buckling because local buckling would be the one that controls uh, then calculate capacity phi mn y uh, from um, the capacity that we get from local buckling and then calculate b1 for mt and b2 for lt that is for a sway problem you'll have to calculate both while the case of non-sway problem you just have to calculate b1 similarly you get mry from here and based on this you can find the ratio mry over mc which is uh, mry over p and n y now after this you uh, choose the equation based on this ratio uh, and then substitute the values and make sure that the value is less than one if it's less than one it means that your beam column is safe to carry both the, uh, the compression as well as the bending uh, moments together if the if uh, and, and the closer to one it is that is if it's around 0.95 it's a good design it's a very good design but if it crosses one if it is above one uh, your section is not sufficient and you'll have to choose a heavier section now as we discussed the bottom terms are actually capacity while the uh, numerator is the required or the applied loads and then PR is calculated from this equation MRX is calculated as we discussed earlier and MRY is calculated now this was analysis and the next uh, that we'll be discussing is design in a design uh, in an analysis problem you basically mm -hmm. are given the section so you don't have to really choose a section before uh, doing the design and you substitute uh, and, and you check the interaction equation. that's all that you do but in the case of design you are not given uh, with a cross section you are just given loads and then you'll have to uh, estimate a section and then do the analysis so uh, so in design you have this equation which is called p equal p u equivalent is equal to p u plus 2 over uh, average depth times m u x 7.5 b average times m m u y and based on this preliminary equation if you if you if you just look at this you understand that in preliminary equation you really convert uh, your uh, uh, column your beam column into an equivalent column so you convert your m u x and m u y to uh, an equivalent uh, compressive compression and then you find and you estimate uh, a capacity based on uh, this PU equivalent and the KLY value that's available in the problem and then we can choose the lightest W shape from the manual and this once a section is chosen you will have to perform analysis to check the interaction equation you don't straight away get a section in this preliminary equation is not available in the manual so we'll have to put it down uh, beforehand so what what we get from this design is just an approximate section which may not be the lightest so, or, or the uh, uh, it may not be sufficient so in that case you'll have to uh, choose a section check the interaction equation if it's working if it's slightly below one which means it's fine if it's greater than one you'll have to choose a heavier section if it's lighter than if it's much less than one you'll have to choose uh, a lighter section now we'll be doing uh, we'll be working out a problem from the textbook uh, now this problem is uh, analysis of beam column so you have been given a beam column now if you look at the question you understand that you have uh, bending only in the x-axis and it is a non-sway frame as mentioned a base frame or a non-sway frame so you don't have to worry about MRY over um, uh, MCY because you don't have bending in Y and it is a non-sway so you don't have to worry about uh, the B2 term so now the service loads have been given 
you can refine the ultimate loads based on uh, the uh, uh, the load factors so this pu uh, is actually pnt because you know uh, pu uh, is calculated based on pnt plus b1 b2 p b2 plt but we don't have plt here so uh, your applied load is basically your pr is equal to pnt so mnt uh, is calculated from 1.2 md plus 1.6 ml which is uh, 90 kip feet we don't have mlt because it is uh, a non straight frame part of the non straight frame so m ultimate is b1 mnt so the task of the rest of the problem is to find the value of b1 now uh, you have to find the uh, now we know that uh, in beam column you have to uh, as we discussed in the steps of analysis you have to perform a beam analysis followed by I mean a column analysis followed by a beam analysis now to find to do the column analysis uh, now these are used to find the, uh, the values of PR and PC PR has already been found but we need to find PC that is the capacity of the section in compression so you check the local buckling which is PF over TF and H over TW against these terms given in table before B4.1a and then we check the overall buckling uh, which is scale over R and you get a value which now this is something we already, that we already studied in uh, the design of columns you find the value of uh, PPN based on PFCR AG you get a value now this value is PC so you can check the value of PU or PC PU is um, P ultimate from the question so that is 525 uh, and then not from the question in fact we calculated the ultimate loads from the service loads so that is calculated 525 divided by CPN is equal to 664 so you get this ratio of 0 0.79 which is higher than 0.2 so now you know the equation that we need to be using and then we have beam action in beam action uh, we have to check the so in beam action uh, we have been told that the unbraced length we have been given the which has been given the question that the unbraced length lb is 15 feet and then uh, you can find the capacity of, uh, of the section as the beam by checking the local buckling as well as lateral torsion buckling which has al already been discussed in uh, the design of beams now we see that the lb value is greater than lp uh, and less than lr and therefore the capa capacity equation is as given here and this is available from the manual uh, and then cb is calculated based on the moment diagram we have the least moment is 0 and the maximum moment is 90 and therefore cb can be calculated as 1.75 plus 1.05 m1 or m2 where m1 or m2 is 0 plus 0.3 times 0 so you get 1.75 and your p uh, your mn value can be calculated as uh, 897 kip feet which is greater than mp now the thing is the maximum value of mn shall not exceed mp mp is the upper limit so if you get any value higher than mp the value of mn should be taken as mp which means uh, the value of M, mp here is 650 so and the value that we have calculated right here is 877 which means the pmn is equal to pmp is taken as 0.9 times 650 of 897 which equals 8 uh, 585 kip feet now the moment magnification factor is calculated using b1 is equal to cm time divided by 1 minus pu over pe1 so pu uh, is actually pr and pr which is 525 
So P E is calculated from pi square E I K L uh, K L square. Now this moment uh, is acting about the x axis. So I is taken as I x and K L is taken as K L x. Uh, so you get P E one as eight four three zero kip kips. You do the math, you get the value of B one as 0 0.64 uh, now the thing is uh, b1 and b2 are moment magnification factors and the, the least value of b1 shall be 1 which means any value below 1 shall not be taken it should be taken as 1 uh, but if it is above 1 uh, if you say 1.5 you have to take b1 and b2 as 1.5 itself now we have to check the interaction equation since there is no uh, moment in uh, on the y axis your m r y is 0 and now we know all these values p u p c m r x m c u substitute all the values you get the ratio as less than 1 when we calculate i think it's about uh, 0 0.92 when we calculate this and it is less than 1 which means the section is adequate Now this is a question which uh, is an analysis question in the sense we have been given a W12 sheet and uh, the question is to calculate the maximum value of W for which uh, uh, the structure is safe. Okay, So what we, the approach is basically the same. Now if you take a close look here, you see that uh, you don't have uh, moments in the y direction uh, you have only moments in the x direction but there are lateral supports in both the y direction okay and this i section means that you have a lateral support in uh, the mid height as well now the ultimate loads are calculated based on pu is equal uh, load factors are applied you get a value of 360 kips uh, you get and now it has been mentioned in the question that kx and ky are both one because it's hinged at the top and bottom in xy direction and lateral supports at mid height and the weak axis and it is part of a non-sway frame which is clear that you don't have lt terms you only are dealing with nt terms so once we do the math i'll be uh, quickly skimming through this problem because it's uh, like the repetition of the previous one except that uh, that the lateral load is unknown which is then calculated by equating to the interaction equation and then you find the value for which find the value of w for which uh, the interaction equation gives a value less than one and you check the uh, to we do the column action to find the capacity of, uh, as a column so we have uh, check the local buckling the overall buckling and based on that we choose the equation and then we find the value of ppn which turns out to be 1338 while the applied ultimate load in compression axial load is 360 and you see that the value of pr over pc is greater than 0.2 and hence we can choose the equation from here now we move into the beam action and, and uh, uh, we check the capacity uh, uh, capacity as a beam and we see that uh, uh, the, uh, we check local buckling we find the value of mp we check lateral torsion buckling in this we see that the uh, lat lay braced length is 11 feet even though the entire length is 22 feet this 11 feet it's because of the lateral supports that the uh, Unbraced length has decreased to 11 feet. We find uh, that L, your LB is less than LP as an LR, which means lateral torsion buckling does not apply, uh, and therefore we take the value of PMN as PNP, which is 697.5 as calculated above. Now we check, uh, we calculate the moment magnification factor B1. 
based on the equation as we discussed earlier we see that the uh, the catalyst b1 it is regarding the bending about the strong axis so the value of i x is taken as uh, i is taken as i x and the kl uh, effective length is taken as kl x and also the value of cm is 1 because there is a lateral load so we find the value of b1 and we obtain a value of 1.09 which means this is given one. We take the value of B1 as 1.09. And MRX is then calculated from the equation B1 MNT plus B2 MLT, but we don't have MLT here, so we end up with B1 MNT. The value of B1 was just calculated before, and MNT was calculated earlier. And then now we use this MRX as 9.11 WU in this interaction equation. And then we find the WU for which uh, uh, the interaction equation, the LX, the left hand side of the interaction equation, U is a value less than 1, and W uh, U max is obtained as 41.45 kips. Now, since there are concentrated loads involved, uh, there has to be a check for concentrated forces as we did in the beam problems. So there is web local yielding, web local crippling and then we try to estimate the length of bearing plates that's required and we, after doing the check as, as we discussed earlier we find that no bearing plates are required now the next question involves take a look at it it involves analysis of a W shape the W shape is given to you it's W8 by 28 you have uh, bending in both x and y and then we see that it is a non sway head which means we still don't have to deal with lt terms mnt mlt plt don't appear we these are just this p will uh, help you to calculate plt and these moments will be used to calculate the value of mrx and mry now ultimate loads are calculated based on uh, the load factors and then the moment diagrams are developed from uh, the, uh, the the moments given to you moment diagram, uh, to calculate the, ulti the ultimate the maximum moments because these are required to calculate MRX uh, as we discussed earlier we first find the capacity of the section as to do column action and we check the local buckling the overall buckling and then finally we get the value of PC which is actually PPM and we get the value of 150.516 and based on these values we can calculate PR over PC to obtain um, uh, the equation that is required uh, to calculate uh, required for the interaction equation and then we have beam action and we see that we have bending in X as well as Y so within uh, beam action about, about for the x-axis you have to calculate b1 and b2 to calculate the value of mrx so for that we have to check the local buckling we have to check the uh, lateral torsion buckling and we find the value of mn and p mnx uh, is obtained and we see that uh, from here itself that your p mnx is less than mux which itself is not a good sign because uh, your capacity in x is less than the moment the maximum moment that's happening in x now the moment magnification factor in x uh, is calculated as b1 and b2 is not involved because uh, there is the the, 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 uh, the beam problem is part of a non sway frame so uh, B1 is calculated based on this equation. CM is taken as 1 because we have lateral loads. Uh, and MRX is calculated from B1 and UX. And these values and this value is obtained. Now, since we have bending at Y, we have to check local buckling for the flange. Uh, uh, PF over 2 PF uh, is only required. We have to check local buckling for the flange only. While we are checking the beam action, we get the moment magnification factor uh, 
for the y-axis uh, and then we calculate the value of MRY. Now if you take a look here, we have PE2 in which we use pi square EI. This I is taken as IY because we are talking about bending in the y direction and KL is taken as KLY, the effective length is taken as KLY because we are uh, really uh, checking the beam action about the y axis. So we get the value of MRY here uh, and then we check the interaction equation. So we substitute all the values it's given to us and we see that the value of uh, the LHS is 2.32 which is much higher than 1 which means that the section is inadequate. Now we have a third question, a fourth question uh, consisting of a W shape. A W shape is given to us and then uh, we see that a column which is a sway frame. So when it is a sway frame, you'll be given, given analysis of results of a non-sway analysis and a sway analysis, which is MT as well as LT. This is for the bending about X alone. You see that uh, you see a lot of free F450 here. So the beam column is subjected to following ultimate loads in X direction. There are no moments in Y direction. So this is just the analysis of results of bending in X direction. Now if you had bending in Y, you would have another set of NT and LT uh, values to be used uh, to calculate uh, the LHS of the interaction equation. And also you would be given the value of KX sway as well as KX non sway because you have two uh, 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 set of analysis results given to you and each has different value of Kx. We have Kx for the sway analysis LT and we have Kx for the non-sway analysis. And we see that generally the uh, Kx of sway is higher than the Kx of non-sway. Now as uh, we discussed, we have to check the capacity of section as a call so the uh, local buckling is checked using table b 4.1 a and then the overall buckling is checked uh, as we studied earlier and we get the value of pr over pc to choose the interaction equation you see that the value is 0.43 which is higher than 0.2 uh, and then we choose equation h11 a right the value of here of PC was less than 0.2, we have gone for H11B. Now the beam action. In beam action, we see that we have only bending about the X axis. We don't have a bending about the Y axis. Uh, so we check local buckling, lateral torsional buckling. We, we uh, find the equation. We see that the LB is less than LP less than LR which means lateral torsion buckling does not control and therefore phi mn is same as phi mp uh, we get the value of pe1 and since it's bending about the y i'm um, sorry bending about the x axis we have pi square eix over k uh, uh, x square and we note that we have to calculate b1 as well as b2 because it is a sway frame so uh, so when we calculate B1, the value of K that is used is K non-sway. And the value of K that we use to calculate B2 will be K sway. And this information is given to you from the uh, question. And then uh, you calculate B, if you note here we have PE2 is calculated uh, from K sway. We calculate the value of B2, we substitute the values of B1 and B2 into PR, MRX, and we don't have MRY because we don't have bending in the Y axis. Now we are in a position to substitute all values into the uh, left hand side of the uh, um, interaction equation. And, and we find that the value is 0.95 which is uh, less than 1 which means the section is adequate. Uh, after the analysis we had also looked into the use of a preliminary design equation to estimate a cross section in design. So let's do a design problem. We have uh, a section given to us which has bending in both x and y axis. And so there 
and as n u h is equal to 25 kip feet and n u y is equal to 10 kip feet we have a lateral load in uh, x square in the about the x axis and then uh, it is part of the norm square it means we don't have the lt analysis given to us we don't require it for this sort of part and these are the moment diagrams which are calculated from the given equation and the preliminary design equation is given to us as pu equivalent is pu plus 2 over d nux plus 7.5 over df nuy now the value of pu is known to us it is the ultimate uh, axial load pu which is given to us as 90 kips and then nux is the ultimate moment in the x direction which is known and in ui is, is the ultimate moment in y direction which is known and what is not not known to us is d as well as b and suppose that the question says that you need to restrict yourself for example in this question we have been told that to select the lightest w12 section so so we are restricting our choice to w12 so d the depth, average depth of a w12 is 12 inches Okay, it may slightly vary from uh, in the in the manual that it may vary from almost 12.11.7 to maybe higher than 12 but the average value can be taken as 12 inch because we are not aware of the cross section as of now and the b average which is the width of the flange bf the bf average is something that we do not know because, and it varies uh, largely because the least uh, BF among the W12 shapes is 3.97 and the highest is 13.4 so we have to take the average of this as 13.4 plus 3.97 over 2 as 8.7 inches and substitute that value into the interaction equation so now if when you substitute all these values we get a PU equivalent that is an equivalent axial load and the value of Fy is 60 KSI, but the table, the column table, that is table 4.1, is designed for Fy equal to 50 KSI. So we have to convert this into an equivalent. This PU equivalent shall be converted to uh, in terms of 60 KSI by substituting into this. That is 50. Is, uh, this can be done by linear interpolation. So Fy is equal to 50 KSI. Uh, we do not know but for FO is equal to 60 ksi the value of pu equivalent is 518.84 so when you just cross multiply we get the value of pu equivalent uh, for 60 ksi as 432.37 kips and it is given to us that klx and kly is 20 ksi now if you remember from uh, in the analysis of uh, column we used to enter the tables with kly and pu equivalent KLY is 20 feet and PU equivalent is 432 KIP. Now, when we uh, go check it out from the manual, we get that the value is uh, that the, the section that is suitable is W12 by 65. Now, once we have a section, the rest is the same. Because, uh, it is the same as analysis. We have to check the column action. We have to check the beam action and finally check the interaction equation this as we uh, uh, did before and we get for this problem we get so we find that the interaction equation uh, turns out to be 0.54 in our first trial which means it's very conservative it is safe but it's not economical so it is much lower so I went ahead by trying a section which is uh, far below what we had taken earlier and for example we have taken w12 by uh, for example in the first trial we had taken w12 by 65 so i went ahead and took w12 by 50 and checked the interaction equation again and when i checked the interaction equation i found that the value of the ellipses is 1.21 which means it's much which is higher than one so that section becomes inadequate so the section just before just higher than 
W12 by 50 is W12 by 53. I did a third trial and I get I got the value of, of the left hand side of the interaction equation as 0 0.86 which is less than 1 which, and then we choose W12 by 53 as the suitable section. Okay. Now uh, this is just a problem uh, to just calculate the PU equivalent uh, uh, for, uh, for a problem which has which is a sway frame and it has bending in both X and Y just to demonstrate the application of the preliminary uh, the, the, the application of preliminary equation preliminary design so to do that for example in this problem we have bending in x as well as y and then since it is sway analysis we have nt and lt given to us for x and nt and L, uh, lt for y as well and we have all kinds of loading here we have moments we have the axial loads so to use the moment equation to use the preliminary design we have pu equivalent which is equal to pu plus 2 over d and x plus 7.5 over df and uy now to calculate pu if you look at the diagram we have two p alternates there that is this both would be same the 600 value so it's the kit for mp in x as well as y they both should always be the same so the p ultimate is to be taken as 600 plus 100 and this is same for this so same for the bending in y as well because uh, the bending uh, the axial force does not really affect the bending so uh, we have p u is equal to 600 plus 100 and then m u x is 50 plus 2 200 which is 250 we add them up and then we have m u y as 10 plus 35 and the bending in y we add them up so we get 45 so now we have found p u m u x and m u y now we need to calculate the value of d and df. Uh, now, uh, now it is told that uh, no specific W shape has been mentioned, which means we have to find W shape uh, for all. Uh, we have to find a suitable candidate from all W shapes. So here. We have W14, W12, and W10. I did not try W8 because it failed for W10, so I did not go into W8. Nevertheless, you will have to check uh, W8 if uh, it's not specifically mentioned. Uh, now, the D average for W14 is 14, and for W12 is 12, and W10 is 10. But the D average is to be calculated from the manual. You have to check out the DF, the least DF for a W14 and the maximum DF for a W14 and find the average. And the same is done for W12 and W10 and we get different values. And hence P U equivalent is then calculated from the preliminary design equation and we get these values of K. The preliminary section uh, is chosen by entering table 4.141 uh, uh, here uh, the KLY is taken uh, as 10 feet for example and then we enter the manual and we get different shapes so for example for W14 we get W14 by 132 for W12 we get W12 by 152 and W10 does not work for this load so you don't get a section here now among the preliminary sections that we just found we see that w14 by 132 is the lattice so we choose this as our first trial and we check the interaction equation okay.